Hey guys, it's me Varun. So in the previous session, we have started with DC shunt generators, right? And we saw how the voltage is getting built up in a DC shunt generator. And the prerequisite for this build up of voltage of DC shunt generator was the presence of something which is called a residual flux. So based on this residual flux, you have a voltage build up. And this voltage build up, we saw the graph actually. So if I just plot it in a small way here. So if this is the open circuit characteristic, so EA versus IF, all right. And so the, you saw that the graph would be something like this and it would intersect the resistance line. So this is VT versus IF and this was the OCC. Okay, This is the OCC or the open circuit characteristics or the magnetization curve. Okay, You can call it anything what you like. At this point, the machine will actually operate. All right. So we'll be discussing about this graph in depth. If you feel that I have, I had just gone a little bit fast then. However, we'll be looking at this graph a lot in depth in the future lecture sessions. All right. So in today's particular session, what we are going to start with is what if you don't have a voltage built up in a DC shunt generator. For example, you are having a DC shunt generator and you're rotating it, but you find that you do not have a voltage build up that means the voltage is not increasing like this and settling at a particular point you don't have any voltage build up all right so there are some reasons why it could be like that so the first reason the first reason why there is no voltage build up why no voltage build up in the dc shunt generator why no voltage build up okay so the first reason would be uh, there may be no residual flux okay the prerequisite which was the presence of a re residual flux that itself might not be there in the generator so what is the solution what is the solution can you can do so you take the field circuit you connect it to an external dc supply and let it develop a little bit of flux in that and if you remove that there must be some amount of residual flux now this residual flux might cancel off because of many reasons all right uh, that we will discuss in the next point here why this residual flux might be getting cancelled off. So anyway, if there is no residual flux in the machine, the solution is connecting the field, connecting the field to an external DC circuit, okay, to an external DC circuit. And this process is actually called the flashing of the field, okay. So if your residual flux is zero and you are using an external field to develop again the flux inside the machine and then you are uh, using it as a DC shunt generator later, this process is called the flashing of the field. All right. Now, the second point might be, all right, the direction of rotation, the direction of rotation might be reversed, might be reversed. Okay. Let us go through both. There are two points or the field connection could have been reversed. The field connection could have been reversed. To understand this point, let us draw the equivalent circuit of the DC shunt generator once again. Now let us draw the armature circuit, uh, sorry, the equivalent circuit and let us uh, analyze this particular point here. All right. So if I draw the equivalent circuit as I have drawn multiple times before. So this is the value of EA. Okay, so this is the value of EA and this is the armature and this is the armature circuit with the resistance RA. Okay, so let me draw the field winding now. So this is the field resistance RF. Now let me uh, draw the field winding in a different way. So usually I just put it down like this, right? So let me just make it like this, this time. And I'm making it big because I need the big diagram for the explanation. All right. And uh, we are going to close it here. So this is a shunt winding. And this is your terminal voltage VT. All right, simple diagram. I just made the diagram a little bit different. So why I have made this diagram a little bit different is because usually in lectures like NPTEL, in their courses, you might have seen that the professor usually draws the diagram like this. So this is just to show that the field winding is usually in perpendicular with the armature. Even we, when we used to do DC machinery fundamentals, I used to draw the diagrams like this, right? And this is a good indication that the field windings were perpendicular to the armature. And that is what is shown here also. So why I don't do that is because it takes a lot more time to draw the diagram like this. And it's easier to just put the diagram uh, the way I usually do. But remember that this is a good way of putting it. And this concept will be always etched in your mind if you draw the diagram like this. But there is no necessity to draw it. 
there is no conceptually wrong or right in this but uh, it is all just a convention so if you have a generator like this so you are having your ia here armature current so this is your field current and if a load is connected this is your load current all right now let us see just uh, for a normal operation let us let this be the normal operation with the polarities plus here and minus here so the current would flow here <coughs> okay and it would be something like this right the current would flow here it would be something like let me just uh, magnify this particular image here okay so i'm just magnifying the image so the current is uh, like this it goes around like this so this is the steady state diagram which i am doing normal condition normally how the generator works so if you see the field in this particular loop you can see that if i use the right hand rule the field will be in this particular direction this will be the flux direction right so just take that for normal operation the flux is in this direction all right so the flux residual also would be in this particular direction so this is the normal operation of the uh, dc machine plus minus on top and the flux residual is in this direction okay from uh, right to left now all this is possible because of rotation of the armature right so let me assume that for a counter clockwise rotation sorry for a clockwise rotation i am getting these all conditions all right for a clockwise rotation i am getting the plus on top and minus in the bottom so this particular polarity is obtained by a clockwise rotation all right so this is my assumption now for example let us just go through the previous point here the direction of rotation might have been reversed or the field connection could have been reversed that is why the voltage build up is not happening let us see what happens actually at that time for example unknowingly you go and change the direction of rotation that this you make the rotation like this in the counter clockwise direction okay so if you make the direction in the counter clockwise direction what would happen the polarities would change right so the polarity would be something like this okay this would become the polarity so if this is the polarity the current direction would be like this now ia will be like this and if will be like this and il will be like this so this would be the current directions now and even this polarity would change and this would be vt so let me just put the rotation also in the same color okay so this would be the new polarities now let us see the same field winding what is the direction of the flux so initially it has a residual flux like this remember that it has a residual flux which is looking like this and after some time you are turning the machine in the opposite direction okay unknowingly you have done it in the opposite direction that is the counter clockwise now you see the field current is going to come like this right this is the field current field current and look at the field current directions it is going to be like this like this like this so this is the field current directions all right so let us see what is the flux which is produced in the field now okay in the second case let us see what is the flux produced by the field so in this case what would happen is that this is in the if you take the loop it is something like this right it is something like this if you see this if you use the right hand screw rule once again you will see that the flux is in the opposite direction okay this is the direction of flux now okay so what happens initially the flux residual which was available was in this direction so this was the flux residual okay because you have rotated the motor in the opposite direction the flux which is produced now is in the opposite direction so it is in this direction which is the flux produced unknowingly okay by mistake so what would happen this flux would cancel out this residual flux and without any residual flux you are not going to have any voltage build up all right so this is one point here okay so this is why uh, i was telling that if you rotate the generator in the opposite direction other than the uh, standard direction which was meant to be rotated you will not have any voltage build up now let us take the next point in which it is said that the field winding is actually reverse so for that i will require this diagram once again so let me draw that diagram once again all right now you can see that i have drawn the diagram but i have not drawn it completely because i need this particular diagram to be like this to explain it properly now in the previous section you can see that i have connected rf directly to the start of the winding which is f and the end of the winding is ff so the winding is connected to the start of the winding and based on this particular connection i am getting a flux residual in this direction and the flux residual 
uh, and the flux which is going to be produced in the finding should be in the same direction then only this voltage build up will be adding up so let us see what happens when the connection is reversed that means rf is going to get connected to the end of the winding ff all right so let me just do that connection initially rf was connected to f like this now i am going to connect rf to ff like this okay so in the previous uh, ff was connected to this particular negative terminal but here now f will be have to connected like this okay and where do you take the output you take a output across the armature so this is vt all right now let us see the current directions now so this is your ia okay and this is your if and this is your il okay now let us see follow the path of if so if comes like this like this like this and it comes like this okay now let us see magnified image of what will be the direction of flux now so this is the magnified image now okay i know that you already know the answer so this is if okay so if is coming like this like this and it is going to continue its path around like this so if you take this particular coil here okay so you find that the current direction is something like this okay so if you draw the right hand screw rule for this you will find that it is a counter clockwise rotation and therefore the flux will be in this direction but what is the flux required it should be in this direction but this is in the opposite direction and this would cancel out the residual flux and again the voltage build up will not be possible in the machine all right so this is why uh this this might be the reason why the voltage is not building up in your generator either you have reversed the direction of rotation or you have reversed the direction of uh, reverse the connections in the field winding so what is the solution that can be done okay the solution is okay the solution is either reverse the direction and check reverse the direction and check again okay or reverse the field connections reverse the field connections and you have to check it and i'll just write it here reverse the field connections and check it okay now the third reason the third problem which might be causing the voltage to not build up will be the rf value the field resistance value might be greater than the critical resistance of the field winding or the speed at which you are rotating the machine n at which you are rotating the machine might be less than the critical speed of the machine okay i know that you have not understood anything by this statement because i will be discussing this in the next lecture because uh, the critical resistance and the critical speed concepts require a lot of time to understand completely okay so i hope you have liked today's particular session in case you are having any doubts please free please be free to put them in the comments below in case you like this video please like share and subscribe the channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you